In 2016, MAPPA Studios released Yori on Ice, a sports anime about men's figure skating. The series was a massive hit, and after achieving global success, the studio announced that they would create a feature-length prequel film called Yuri on Ice the Movie, Ice Adolescence. The film was scheduled for release in 2019, but was delayed multiple times. In April of 2024, eight long years after the Yuri on Ice movie was first announced, MAPPA finally put the movie out of its misery. Like a beloved family dog tragically stricken with rabies, MAPPA took Ice Adolescence out back and shot it dead. Oh, no, I'm sorry, my editor, that's me, has left a note here saying I should rephrase this sentence. <clears throat> In April of 2024, MAPPA released a public statement explaining that the film was officially canceled. So, I, like many other fans around the world who had been patiently awaiting the film's release, must ask a question. What the hell happened? How could MAPPA have fumbled the bag this badly? I'm still having a hard time accepting that. Surely the studio provided a good reason for this cancellation in their official statement. Let's see. Due to various circumstances, we have had to make the difficult decision to stop the production. Okay, I've seen brick walls with more transparency than this sentence. It looks like I'll have to dig a little deeper into this on my own. Before I get started, here's a disclaimer. Everything I'm about to say is speculation, no more than an educated guess based on publicly available information. It's entirely possible that I'm wrong and the film's production was halted due to mundane logistical issues like red tape or private personal reasons among production staff. I'd also like to specify that I do not in any way wish to place any blame on the many talented individuals who worked on Yuri on Ice or Ice Adolescence. I wish them all the best and I'm truly grateful for the phenomenal show they released in 2016. So, now that that's out of the way, let's go back to the very beginning. Yuri on Ice was written and directed by Sayo Yamamoto, a writer and director known for her work on Ergo Proxy, Samurai Champloo, and Psychopaths. Yuri on Ice is an anime original, meaning it wasn't based on previous source material. Original anime are big financial risks for studios. Anime based on existing manga have established fandoms, but original anime have the difficult job of appealing to an audience with no prior knowledge of the story or its characters. But that wasn't the only risk that MAPPA took when creating Yuri on Ice. The show prominently features a romantic relationship between the two male leads. Yuri on Ice is a gay love story. In Japan, homosexuality is tolerated but not exactly widely accepted, and same-sex marriage is still illegal there to this day. While there's certainly a market for gay love stories in Japan, it's rare for an anime with a gay romance to compete toe-to-toe -to -toe with more popular genres like action or adventure. And yet, MAPPA's gamble paid off. Yuri on Ice was the top-selling TV anime of 2017 in Japan, selling more DVD and Blu-ray copies than Moana, Diamond is Unbreakable, and the Sword Art Online movie combined. <laughs> it's the second highest grossing original anime series from the years 2000 to 2020, outselling Angel Beats, Gurren Lagann, and Code Geass. The show was also a huge hit internationally, winning multiple awards like Crunchyroll's Anime of the Year Award. I can't even begin to explain how much hype this show generated. Multiple Olympic figure skaters like Evgenia Medvedeva and Johnny Weir were vocal about their interest in Yuri on Ice on social media. Among anime fans, figure skaters, and in queer online communities, the show was a hit. But even with all that considered, Yuri on Ice didn't actually make MAPPA very much money. In an interview with Japanese music magazine Compass, MAPPA's CEO, Manabu Otsuka, said this, Our production, Yuri on Ice, was a huge hit, but compared to that success, the money that came into the studio was very little. But how can that be? Didn't I just say that Yuri on Ice outsold every other TV anime in 2017? Well, here's the thing. The show did make a lot of money, but not all that money went directly to MAPPA. Much of it went to the Yuri on Ice Committee, the group of companies who invested money into the production of the anime. MAPPA's cut of the profit isn't public information, but if the CEO's statement is any indication, they probably didn't get the lion's share. The COVID-19 pandemic was also a possible contributing factor to the film's cancellation. The 2021 Anime Industry Report showed that although the demand for anime increased in 2020, the market declined by 3.5%. Some titles were delayed, and the cost of production increased. Even though demand was high, profits declined because of the delays. And then there's MAPPA's production schedule. 
The studio has gained something of a reputation for pumping out high-profile, high-quality anime at light speed, to the alleged detriment of their employees. In 2020 alone, MAPPA simultaneously released four shows, Jujutsu Kaisen, the final season of Attack on Titan, Gymnastic Samurai, and The God of High School. Most of these shows are high-profile action series requiring a lot of fight scenes, which are expensive and time-consuming to animate. Multiple MAPPA employees have publicly accused the studio of being a toxic work environment, where animators are overworked and underpaid. In 2022, Ryu Nakayama, the director of Chainsaw Man, another MAPPA production, left to start his own studio. And despite MAPPA promising to make changes for the better, employee complaints persisted. Unfortunately, MAPPA isn't the only studio to have these problems. It's not uncommon in the anime industry for animators to be exploited, paid abysmally low wages for long hours of overtime work. As this Medium article by Darian Gillespie explains, while some voice actors or screenwriters have unions, it's rare for animators to be a part of a union protecting their workers' rights or guaranteeing fair treatment and fair pay. This New York Times expose even claims that some animators make as low as $200 per month. Ultimately, the cancellation of the Yuri on Ice movie probably stemmed from a combination of factors. Low profits from the project going directly to MAPPA, delays caused by the pandemic, a busy production schedule with a lot of other projects requiring their attention, and who knows what else. It's unfortunate that one of the few popular queer anime ended up getting the axe. The cancellation of the Yuri on Ice movie is pretty disappointing, but I don't think it was part of a grand scheme to destroy the gay agenda. Instead, I think the Yuri on Ice film was simply unlucky enough to get sacrificed on the chopping block. It's also unfortunate that this affected one of the anime industry's few prominent female directors, Sayo Yamamoto. Yuri on Ice and the Persona 5 video game opening, which also released in 2016, were some of the last projects she's appeared to have worked on. I admire her work, and I really hope that we get to see more from her soon. Ultimately, I think the film's cancellation is a symptom of a larger problem disorganization, and corporate greed within the anime industry. Even though MAPPA was widely criticized after the controversy surrounding Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, the series was still a huge success, and it undoubtedly made them a lot of money. As anime studios continue to make record-breaking profits, their animators will likely continue to deal with unfair working conditions and low pay. If you'd like to help make a difference and support animators, consider donating to the Animator Dormitory on Patreon. I learned about them while I was making this video. They are a Tokyo-based nonprofit organization founded in 2011, and they help subsidize housing for up-and-coming animators. You can check out their YouTube channel here. I've started pledging $5 a month, and if more people do the same, the program will hopefully be able to support even more up-and-coming animators. The Yuri on Ice movie might be dead, but hopefully if animators receive more support and better working conditions in the future, other series can be saved from the same fate. Yuri on Ice has left a lasting legacy in the anime community, and although it didn't go out on a high note, there is no denying that this show made history. To those who worked on this project, from the bottom of my heart, thank you.